The Diocese of San Antonio in Texas, here in the United States, has been the center of a lot of odd things happening in the church lately. Odd because we're talking about a confluence of events here. We're talking about the suppression of a traditional leaning Catholic organization, a private organization, but one that had until very recently worked with the blessing of the local ordinary. And at the same time that this is happening, in the same diocese, you have alleged messages from heaven warning about the coming chastisement that God's patience has basically been is gone now. And that he is very that he has lost his patience because of the prelates in the church who put up with a essentially a pretender on the throne of Peter, if the messages are to be believed, and that soon he will unleash his wrath. This is um, this confluence of events is very interesting. Again, it's all happening in the same diocese of San Antonio. So we're going to give you a brief update on the situation involving Sanctus Ranch, and then talk about these messages, these alleged messages from heaven. And I say alleged because the way it's supposed to work for private revelation to be considered okay for the laity to really in, engage with is supposed it's supposed to be that the local ordinary is supposed to actually investigate things determine whether these are valid messages or not and then submit something to rome and rome then weighs in on it and it's been that way for hundreds and hundreds of years predating the council of trent there's a lot of apparitions that i've covered in the past where the local ordinary said yes on the subject and then the vatican just sort of sat on their hands and did nothing with it I've covered some of those because at least you got halfway there. Here, we're in a different kind of situation because the local ordinary, um, I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb here and say the local ordinary has demonstrated that he may not be the most trustworthy figure here to judge such things. So what do we do? With such apparitions and such messages, it is prudent to take them with a slight grain of salt. But also remember, what is the principal motivation for the faithful to be given such messages? They are to it, it. They are for the perp one singular purpose, and that's the salvation of souls. So any message from alleged message from heaven that that seems to be at least credible should inspire a couple of things in you. First and foremost, for you to go to confession at the next opportune moment, and if that opportune moment is several days away, to say an act of contrition, an act of you know perfect contrition, and then get to confession as soon as you can. And given that we're in Lent, a lot of parishes are now beginning to offer more times for for confession. That should be the first thing you do. And the second thing you should do is consider what the actual lesson for the faithful is in such things. And since we're talking about something that is um, a little doom and gloom, fire and brimstone kind of messaging here, that's something we should ponder as well. Because this is happening also at an interesting time. As many of you have noted, there's a rather large solar eclipse coming that is going to be crossing several cities named Nineveh. And uh, it has something to do, its cross point is has something to do with a previous eclipse that covered a lot of places named Salem in the United States. Again, coincidence, possibly. But when you start adding coincidence to coincidence to coincidence, it at least leads itself, lends itself to credibly considering that something else is going on. So let's talk first briefly about this stuff going on with Sanctus Ranch, and then we'll go to these me messages. And the messages haven't been finished being given public because tomorrow, LifeSite News is giving you part three of these messages. So make sure to tune in for that, and we'll probably talk about them within a couple days afterwards. But for now, let's talk about this. If you're not familiar with the Sanctus Ranch story, um, weirdly, LifeSite News is having issues with their website right now. Uh, I had open in my tab, open tabs for the actual apparition messages already. So as long as I don't do anything to those tabs, they'll be fine. But trying to open up these about Sanctus Ranch, the website wasn't working. I had to actually use the archive website to archive copies of these articles. And then because I had to do it, it took like five times as long. There's something going on with their website right now. I hope everything is okay over at LifeSite. This is just give you a brief reminder of what's going on there. So headline, 
Outrage. San Antonio Archbishop cancels Catholic family business. The letter from Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller of San Antonio formally prohibits all clergy, schools, retreat centers, and Catholic groups from contracting with or utilizing Sanctus Ranch for any Catholic-sponsored retreats, meetings, activities, or spiritual endeavors. Something weird is going on here because the archbishop had previously used the facilities of that of Sanctus Ranch himself. He offered masses there himself, as did high-ranking cl clergy within his diocese. They would come there and offer masses. And now he's saying that they're not authorized to and have never been authorized to offer masses there. What's even weirder about this is he is, of course, essentially destroying the livelihood of a family who runs this operation. And not only that, they've essentially been shunned. Kind of odd behavior from an archbishop when this happened essentially without warning to them, because apparently other Catholics in the diocese knew that this was coming. In a devastating blow to faithful Texas Catholic family with six children who have made their living running a private ranch, the Archbishop of San Antonio, Texas, issued a public letter to all Catholics directing them not to do business with the ranch. The January 30th letter formally prohibits all clergy, schools, retreat centers, and Catholic groups, quote, from contracting with or utilizing Sanctus Ranch for any Catholic-sponsored retreats, meetings, activities, or spiritual endeavors. Even where contracts were already signed, the bishop directed them to discuss it with his legal team rather than fulfill their contractual obligations. That right there, by the way, may, in the, may end up earning them a date in court because that's now the archdiocese interfering with pre-signed contracts, and the law tends to take a very dim view of that. Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller instru instructed Catholics against Sanctus Ranch, telling them not to participate in any of its activities. Previous to the Archbishop's action against Sanctus Ranch, the family-owned business had bookings nearly every weekend. Every Catholic booking has been canceled since they were from Catholic groups in the Archdiocese. Although though the family believes other groups withheld their contracts because they knew the Archbishop's impending move. They also believe the Archbishop influenced other dioceses against them. The financial loss amounts to more than $425,000. You see why this may end up involving the secular legal system. The language from the Archbishop is so severe that according to testimony of locals in the community, the family's children are being ostracized by their peers as friends feel they should not visit. Mrs. Jennifer Sevigny, who runs the ranch with her husband and children, was in tears as she told this reporter that she prayed the turmoil would not harm the faith of her children. This is an organization that barely survived the events of 2020, and now the Archbishop is trying to undermine them. One of the things the bishop says is that the charges against the ranch listed in his letter is that the chapel on the ranch is an unapproved chapel lacking any canonical status. And there has been no approval granted to conduct sacramental ministry of any kind in this chapel, and the altar has not been dedicated to the sacred liturgy. Now, they're basically treating the ranch as if they're like independent Catholic priests or the SSPX or something. The way some of the heart of the bishops who treat the SSPX and those kinds of priests rather harshly, they're treating them that way, Okay. Sanctus Ranch owner Dan Seving he repl replied in a public response to the Archbishop's press release that in 2019, the Archbishop himself twice celebrated Mass on a non-dedicated altar of the ranch. Moreover, the Archbishop's auxiliary bishop, Gary Janek, also offered Mass on the same altar for a men's retreat in October 2021. For the Archbishop to condemn publicly his own ministerial conduct, as well as that of Bishop Janek, is the essence of hypocrisy. I think you get the idea. We'll have links to this stuff in today's show notes at Return to Tradition. Again, for those joining us a little bit late, we're going. There's an odd confluence of events going on in the Diocese of San Antonio between the crushing of this traditional leaning Catholic family operation, as well as like some mystical messages, some alleged messages from Our Lord and Our Lady coming to another organization in San Antonio at the same time, and this kind of creates a dilemma for Catholics because the bishop is supposed to actually approve such messages before they're really distributed to the public. But this bishop is demonstrating sort of a lack of fidelity to things. And that has a lot of questions to us about this. So the, for other, some the most recent update on this came from just a couple of days ago. And it was from this headline, canceled priest accuses San Antonio archbishop of libel in Sanctus Ranch Prohibition. Father Donald Cluster is prepared to take legal action against Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller for publishing what he says is libel against him in the January 30th prohibition against a family-owned Sanctus Ranch Retreat Center where he lives. One of the things the Archbishop did was say that 
none of the that that the priests who offer mass there were not in good standing, that they were essentially schismatic priests, or that they were members of organizations like the Coalition for Canceled Priests, which turned out not to be true, <laughs> that these were all priests in good standing. You begin to see why that this is a this is there's an honesty issue here and a transparency issue here in this diocese. A priest named by the Archbishop of San Antonio in an order forbidding Catholics from assembling at a private business is determined to fight back. Father Donald Kloster ordained a bishop of Bridgeport, Connecticut in 1995, told LifeSite News in a recent interview that he's prepared to take legal action against Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller for publishing what he says is libel against him in the January 30th prohibition against a family-owned Sanctus Ranch retreat center where he lives. It was shocking the way in which the Archbishop slandered Mr. Sevigny, the owner of his property, as well as myself and Father Fashing, citing things that were totally not true. I'm thinking, well, you know, your spies were, re were really bad because they didn't get things right, and he said some libelous things in there. I was always told as a young priest, you sue a bishop, you sue a sitting bishop, and you'll be blacklisted. So I never even thought of it before. Now they've pushed me too far, and I'm going to find a lawyer, and I'm going to do whatever I can to clear my good name. In his prohibition, Garcia Siller claimed that the priest at Sanctus Ranch do not possess faculties, are not in good standing, which he defined as acting under the authority of a bishop, in communion with the Holy Father, do not have the required permission to exercise ministry in the Archbishop of Archdiocese of San Antonio, and have been disciplined by their bishops. The Archbishop claimed also that the chapel in the center is run as a pseudo-parish, that Kloster is hearing confessions, and that the validity and licity of the sacraments celebrated at the center cannot be guaranteed. In a particularly suggestive passage, the Archbishop stated that the unauthorized priests, personnel, and volunteers at the center's private micro school, Lumen Christi Academy, are not safe environment certified. Do you know what that means? It means they're essentially saying if you bring your kids there, you might have to, they may have a run in with a McCarrick type. Think about that. This bishop is playing with fire. Closser told LifeSite that he has not been hearing confessions, the Archbishop not having granted him the necessary permissions, but that as a validly ordained priest, he can say Mass in his own home. A priest that is at his domicile has a right to say Mass, he told LifeSite. Now, the ecclesial authorities call it a private Mass, but there's no such thing in canon law. It's a Mass. All Masses are, by their very nature, public. And if a priest says a Mass that he has a right to say every day, and people come to that Mass, they have a right to come. You get the idea. This is the bishop whose diocese this next story is happening in, and this creates a bit of a dilemma for us. Now, I'm curious if you have, how many of you are actually familiar with what's, what is actually going on in at the Divine Mercy uh, Retreat Center in Texas? Because this has been, I mean, this has kind of made a big, been a, uh, been a big deal going on here, but I want to make sure I get the right ones here because I've got, they've got, got two stories on this. And we have this story. Same diocese. As the same time as this stuff is going on. I'm not a big believer in coincidences. So their headline, again from LifeSite, who've only been, been the only ones really covering this. Revelations from heaven. Wake up, the divine reconquest over church's infiltration begins now. A religious order that has been receiving messages from heaven for 30 years has finally decided to go public with them. Urged by Jesus to make their revelations public, they give direction and hope to the faithful in this perilous and confusing time. Archdiocese of San Antonio, the same bishop. I but you would have to presume the bishop is, knows what's allegedly been going on there. He's done nothing with this from the looks of it. Neither have his predecessors, and you have to ask yourself why. Let's get to some context here. The world and the church today are in a state of confusion, such that at no other time in human history does our Lord's warning in Matthew 24, 24 ring true. Even the elect, if possible, will be deceived. At this time where especially the leaders in the one true church of Christ are silent and many betray, there's no longer an earthly solution to the crisis. But God has always revealed his works on the prophets, even to this day. As we read in the Holy Bible, for the Lord God doth nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. I was blessed by a providential encounter with Father John Mary Foster of the Mission of Divine Mercy in Texas, same diocese as what's going on over there, who had discerned he was to reach out to me regarding the messages from heaven his religious community has received about our times. Most importantly, the messages from our Lord and Our Lady reveal that the heavenly reconquest of the church, which has been infiltrated, begins now. And they also say that the church today is without a shepherd. Pause. These messages 
say that the church today is without a shepherd. That means that there is not a pope right now. That's what they mean. Some of you will probably bristle at that a little bit, especially those of you who uh, align everything related to the Benny Papist position. You know, the Benedict was the was the true pope, and Francis is a pretender position as set of a contism. When set of a contism is a formally defined thing, and everyone likes to just lump it in with them because they say, "Well, the see is vacant." Ergo, it's the same thing. It's not. <laughs> Otherwise, anybody who likes living in a republic is a Republican. And you might understand why that might make some people bristle. This alleged message from heaven says that Francis is a pretender. So let's go to the first full message. This is the first full message released today. This is this was like a month ago. I've been sitting on this because I needed to figure out how it was going. Well, not a month ago, about two weeks ago. But I, I needed to figure out how to handle this because... Until I noticed the weird coincidence here of San Antonio. So, messages from both our Blessed Mother and Jesus. And this is apparently to all the children of God, given on the 28th of February, 2024. The uh, priest says that this was given to him while he was on, uh, on mission in Mexico. So, this is, our, this is apparently from our Blessed Mother. I'll speak first daughter, so this was to actually a sister. Right. For my new Tepeyac, I speak to you, children. For my sanctuary, I send you my love and my consolation. And once more, I tell you to look at my son and do everything that he tells you to do. He is the living word of the Father. His love made flesh for you. Children, the battle looms and you are asleep. I come to wake you. As a good mother who, being vigilant and keeping watch over her children and seeing the increasing danger, shakes her children so that they may not perish without fighting. Children, these are the times announced from of old in which the thrice-cursed serpent will poison many and meddle in what is ours and will rise to confuse the nations with his puppets, his servants, to destroy all that is of God and to take his place in sovereignty. He is longing to be adored and his hatred for God have motivated him to prepare for centuries what is now being unveiled before your eyes. I've come to you, children, time and time again, year after year, to warn you, to call you to the battle, to give you implements with which to fight and defeat Satan's works. But how few of you have listened to me? How few of you have understood me and placed yourselves at my disposal in order for me to form my luminous army? How few, children? How few? Let's pause. This is a... This is calling out essentially those who ignore the various Marian apparitions. We can rattle the approved ones off if you need. Going back to uh, Quito, Ecuador, Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification. Sometimes called Good Success for some reason, but the Good Event of the Purification is a better translation as well as Our Lady of La Salette, uh, Our Lady of Fatima, obviously, Our Lady of Akita, and some other minor ones too. Minor meaning not necessarily as well known. People tend to ignore them. Even though their message is directed towards all laity, and it's a call to repentance and to do acts of penance for the sins of others, to warn us about bad clergy. So public in nature that past councils of the church have said, apparitions approved by the church that are of sufficiently public nature to ignore them is a sinning it's piety <laughs> okay here she's calling out all those who think they should ignore such things they do so at their peril for my new tepeyac yes new from here will flow the great river of grace to reconquer all the children of god from this little piece of land hidden rough i call you out once more children there is no time left the battle our counterattack begins it begins with these words which we give to you as light protection guidance and consolation our words. Do not ignore them. Receive them and welcome them into your souls. They'll give you light to see in the darkness of the confusion that now reigns in the church and in the world. They will give you the guidance that you need now my, that my church is without a shepherd to tend to my sheep, to my children. They will give you the protection that you need against all the attacks of those who have clothed themselves in sheep's clothing and in false meekness, but who are ravenous wolves that are devouring my children without pity, confusing, distorting the supreme and radiant truth to then destroy the souls of my children. On guard, my children, you are hated because you are children of God and mine. They want to destroy you, my children. Arise with me to fight and defend, to uncover and with me to crush the filthy devil and his pride, and receive my words of love and consolation. You are wounded, my little children, some more, some less, but all of you carry wounds from your own decisions, from the hatred of Satan, and all of you need our healing. All of you need our help. Here she's talking about we all carry sins or and have we live in a world so beset by sin from the from the adversary's influence that we have all been touched by it to some degree. We all need healing. Okay. So 
As my children, I give my Jesus to you again. I give him to you with all my personal love. I give him to you as your king. I give him to you as your savior and redeemer. I give him to you as your captain, as your master, as your refuge and protection. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Only him, children. Only he saves. Only he purifies. Only he heals. There is no other children. Do not be confused. This one's pretty subtle, but what do you think they're talking about here? I suspect this is about ecumenical dialogue. Remember, only Jesus. And yet the Vatican wants to dialogue and accompany those who categorically reject our Lord. How offensive to heaven that must be. Many voices try and will not try to pass as his. Many say and will say that they do everything in his name. But look at their works. Look at their fruits, children. Do not ignore them. The Father most holy has given all authority and all judgment to the Son. Only his name saves, children. There is no other name. Before him shall all knees bend and all foreheads bow. He is. There is no other. Open your eyes and look at your God. Keep your eyes steadfast on him. Look, lay aside your thoughts and human criteria, for they are infected by the reigning lack of faith. And I, your mother, will take you by the hand and will prepare your soul to receive the supreme gift that is the beautiful and radiant, simple faith that gives life to everything in your being. You need this luminous faith in the center of your soul to be able to face the present and coming times, in which everything that seemed to be stable will crumble down. You need this faith to be able to receive all that we desire to give you and that you need in order to work in our plan and be instruments of grace for all your brothers who still live in the darkness of the separation from God. Come to me, my little children. I am your mother, full of love for her little ones. I clasp you to my heart and I bring you in my arms to my Jesus. Do not refuse this gift of mine. Do not refuse this time of grace. After the last call comes, it's cry of the trumpet that begins the great battle. All that takes place is a preparation for this battle, and you need to be prepared. You've been created for these times and for this battle, and I, your mother, and your queen, remind you of it. Amen. The times have come, and our God rises with power. Blessed is he who receives these words and allows them to bear their fruit. Blessed is he who abandons himself to me and allows me to form him. He will be a worthy soldier of the divine word who descends once again to make his truths shine. The eternal truth, luminous, imperishable. Children with me and with all the heavenly hosts, let us adore him who is, who was, and who is to come. The Father, the Almighty, the Son, the Redeemer, the most Holy Spirit of God, the Sanctifier and Restorer. To the one and triune God be all praise, glory, honor, and power forever and ever. Amen. Listen to my voice, little children, your heavenly mother, very most holy, your immaculate queen, who together with you will crush the head of the filthy serpent. Amen. Pause here before we get to the words alleged to be from our Lord. Anthony Abbott says, this story is strange. Yes, yes, it is. This is why one of the reasons I was very hesitant to talk about this. But, and a lot of people will be, well, this and the, of course, the uh, the thing that goes with this, which is the um, the the other thing going on in San Antonio with Sanctus Ranch, the whole thing. Everything in that diocese right now is very strange. Um. Catherine says, both messages shared by Mission of Divine Mercy from Peck are a great warning. Cardinal Burke's novena is heavenly inspired. That, by the way, that's a reminder. Today's the day that Cardinal Burke's nine-month novena begins. This is for the for the, essentially the restoration of the church. So bear that in mind. Yes, David, I covered that a couple days ago. The video's on this channel. People want to see it. Um. Peter, some people say that some that the church has been in a has had a, a functional been in a state of functional apostasy for decades now. Um, Catherine, yes, this is the first message from uh, from them. We'll go back to it now and uh, talk about what our Lord is said to have said there. Now, I, your Lord and God, speak to you. I speak to you from this throne of mine, this little hill in which I will show you my power and my love. Look at my cross, children. What do you see? my absolute obedience, my total abandonment, the living testimony given to the words and the will of my Father, the seal with my blood over the eternal truth, unchangeable and even fruitful, fulfillment of the entrusted mission for the good of humanity and all that has come forth from the heart of Peter, the perfect, the heart of the Father, the perfect cooperation with the plan of the Father, plan of mercy, plan of grace, plan of restitution and vindication. Look at it again. What do you see? my pierced hands, feet, and side, the pain that is offered, the complete offering of body, soul, and spirit that is consumed to the last step, the last drop, the last effort to be faithful to the will of the Father, the complete offering, the offering to which you unite your sorrows, sufferings, and efforts, the great offering that bears continuous fruit and that now reaches its fullness. Everything children is prepared in faith. 
in obedience and humility and in pain. I've given you an example with my life, with my life and with my death and with my resurrection. Follow me. Follow me in this tremendous hour. When, as in that Friday in which all the powers of the devil united to torment me and put me to death, they now come together once more to torment and put my church, my mystical body, to death, and, the, and thus give death to all that belongs to God. Satan has never ceased longing to be adored, and what you see now is his plan to supplant God in everything. I let him show his plan, uncover his servants and his machinations, so that you can see them, so that you can realize who he is and where he has infiltrated himself. He has infiltrated everything. And he thinks that he will have dominion over all. And I must let him continue to believe this while I gather my army to destroy his works at the appointed hour. This is the hour, children. I call you to my army. I speak to you and I will speak to you. Do not reject my voice. My voice will thunder and will resound and will destroy every work of Satan. Open your eyes and your ears to see these words of mine. God speaks to you. He speaks to you from his throne in heaven. He speaks to call you and awake you. He speaks to console your pain of feeling abandoned. Your God speaks to you. Listen to me, children, listen to me. Your Jesus, the divine words who speak to you here and now. And that is the alleged message of our blessed Lord. And I say alleged because the local bishop hasn't chimed in on this, but he's because he seems to be too busy crushing a family business. Literally what he's doing. And this is the most recent one. Where I published March 6th, just a few days ago, but written on the 22nd of February. Again, to my children scattered throughout the world, your God speaks to you from the little holy hill, our new Tepayak. The time has come, my children, to call you to join yourselves to my army, the army that I have formed and forged in silence, in what is hidden with countless trials, sacrifices, and sufferings. How many small battalions I have formed throughout the world on each continent, as cisterns of pure water to give life to my hungry and abandoned children, hungry for the truth, hungry for me, and abandoned by those who have become a stumbling block to me, my priest's sons, to whom I have given the mandate and mission to care for my sheep, to protect them and nourish them with my sacred food. But these shepherds have fallen asleep and have abandoned you, my children, the vast majority of them. Pause here. The shepherds, the priests, have fallen asleep and have abandoned you, the vast majority of them. This is hard for a lot of people to hear. I have faithful shepherds, the joy of my heart, who unite to my Jesus, work ceaselessly to guide my sheep into my fold, and how they are hated and persecuted. They will receive the crown of martyrdom for this witness and work in my honor. My voice is about to thunder in order to awaken my sleeping children, drunk in the world with Satan's lies. Again, pause here. My voice is about to thunder to awaken my sleeping children. <laughs> what what does that mean? That some uh, mystics and unapproved Marian apparitions have spoken about sort of a um, an illumination of conscience that every person on the in the world will know where they stand with God. Is that this? We will find out possibly. They do not recognize the times, they do not recognize my voice, and they are useless to me. But I will wake them up with the thunder of my voice. My children, you who suffer at seeing the devastation of my church, as seeing the world completely dominated by Satan and his cohorts, raise your eyes and your hearts to me, children. You have called me, and I come. You have been faithful, and now I show you that I am your faithful God. Faithful to my word, faithful to my truth, faithful to my love for you. I have come, children, to restore what is mine. I come, children, to take possession of what Satan and his infinite pride wish to take from me. I come to reconquer your hearts and the hearts of all my children. Raise your eyes and wait for me. Raise your hearts, my little ones, and trust in me. Raise your hearts and you will see me. Do not be afraid. Your God rises on your behalf. Remain in me and do not fear. Again, given to an unknown female, as far as I know, and then given to a priest. Right now, daughter from my priest's sons, those who instead of being my closest collaborators, my most docile and faithful instruments, my rest have become very great hindrance. Souls of thieves stealing from my children what belongs to them as heirs and by necessity. My grace, my guidance, my light, my forgiveness. Souls rebellious to my voice, lazy souls. How many of these priests do I have to cover here on this channel for this to make sense to people? Do you need anything more in your face than the diabolical artwork that I've covered in the last few days on this channel? This That's the most in-your-face version. But how many priests are out there walking about who don't actually believe 
they hunt their masses every day. They give a a homily that can be summed up as dad joke and humanitarian interpretation of the gospel. How many times do you see that? They're actually the more dangerous ones because most people won't notice it. Because at least people notice when you show them diabolical artwork pr promoted by priests, they tend to notice. Rupnik isn't subtle. But a lot of these other priests that are being hinted at here are very much more subtle for people. Souls that having lost me do not seek me. Venturing further and further into darkness, they turn their backs to my light. They will become drier and more withered than the fig tree I cursed before entering Jerusalem. Throughout the years, I have pruned and fertilized them, trying to revive them, but they refuse my help. My help. The help I send now and when I want, as it do for my children. Woe to those shepherds who are hindrance and are useless to me. I give one more opportunity. I grant it to you, a last opportunity, obtained for you by the sacrifice and prayer of those whom you have despised and abandoned, my victim souls. In response to them, I give you one more opportunity. Do not waste it. The Lord is giving these lukewarm priests and these cold priests one chance to repent. I will wait one more for one more hour for you, but if you do not respond, if you do not listen to me, I will proceed with my plan casting you aside that you do not cause any more damage with your inaction. I need your help, sons. I called you. I created you for this hour that you might help me and help your brothers, so that you take me to the souls who are most in need, so that you protect my sheep, so that my power and authority, you free them from Satan's claws. So you take my peace and hope into the darkness of despair. So you feed my sheep so that you heal them. Sons, this is a very arduous work, exhausting. Lay down your lives at each minute with each step. I need you. Wake up, sons. See what is in truth happening around you. Come out of the miasmas of the enemies, of the of his confusion and seductions. My voice is clear, direct. The yes that is yes and the no that is no. The truth is light. Sons, you are surrounded by lies. You have been lied to, and you've been absorbed these lies that are so harmful because they obscure the truth. By obscuring the light of truth, your whole being is, is obscured, and you're easily distracted, and you become completely harmless to my enemy. I need warrior sons, priests, and soldiers, fearless in battle. Gave you a sword on the day you were consecrated to me, to my service in my temple. What have you done with it? I gave you a pure white stole. In what condition is it now? In your consecrated anointed hands, what have you used them for? Where is your faith, sons? Instead of being strong, invincible flame that gives light and life and warmth and makes you true co-workers of mine, you have let it be extinguished. I only see a little flame here and there, so poor and weak. Sons, this is why darkness is spread, because there is no faith in my priests. The simple and pure faith of children, the strong and valiant faith of my children, the loyal unto death faith, the faith that is light in life. You have let it be extinguished in you and in my children. You are responsible for so much darkness, sons. Again, this is directed at priests, seemingly the vast majority of them. And you, called bishops who should be fathers to my priests, sons, examples, and guides have become much worse than demons, for at least the demons recognize me as God, despite hating me. But you've cast me aside and you've used me for your own ends. Woe to you. Woe to you if you do not recognize this last opportunity. If you do not turn to me, if you do not recognize your guilt and responsibility. Yes, you care, carry a terrible responsibility. Gigantic, and I will call you to an account. No one mocks me. No one takes advantage of me. You are so blinded that you do not see how you are being used and manipulated. I speak to you, my sons, who were once sincere in following me. I must correct you. It is mercy. I must wake you up. It is mercy. I must shake you. It is justice. I am your father, and I have mercy. But I am also your king, and I demand your loyalty and your obedience. And I am your God. Do not forget this. And as God, I have right to everything, that you give me everything. Reconsider. Listen to my voice. These words that I give you to you now to show you what I need from you now. You have not only let the smoke of Satan infiltrate into my sanctuary, but you have allowed a whole army of demons to take your places. And you have allowed the usurper to sit on the chair of my Peter, he who is carrying out the great treason that will leave my church desolate. And you have allowed this. Let's pause here. This is not just a message to priests. This is a message to cardinals. You have allowed the usurper to sit on the chair of my Peter, who is carrying out the great treason that will leave my church desolate. And you have allowed this. This is a message, if it is true, if this is real, this is a message to cardinals, to bishops of the church, to the ones that everyone here debates whether they have the authority to do anything about Francis and the men he has surrounded himself with. 
Most to ask, is the apparition to kids? No, it's not. This was given to religious. Let's continue, hopefully, to the end. Do you carry with you the terrible responsibility of this horrendous offense to me, your God? You have abandoned me, and you have abandoned my little ones, and you have abandoned my Jesus. Woe to you. Sons, listen to me now. Turn to me now. Leave behind your criteria and receive my light. You are in darkness and do not realize it. But I, your God, have mercy. I, your good father, take pity on your blindness, starvation, and nakedness. And I offer you these words of mine to you so that in them you hear me. With them you clothe yourselves and by them be nourished. Make haste, sons, there is no more time. I need you to be completely mine. Do not resist my voice, sons. I speak to you as your father. But soon I shall speak to speak as the all-powerful and only God, the Lord God of hosts. He who is the only one. No one can resist this voice. Before this devastating thunder that will demolish, will bring down every presence of the enemy and all those who chose him over me. I give you this last opportunity. I remind you of the well-known saying, he who runs with wolves learns how to howl. You have not recognized the wolves that surround you. You have received them as true shepherds. And instead of speaking only my words, my truth, you have let them howl and you've begun to imitate them as well. Stand up, sons, on guard. Wake up. Fight. Defend what I have entrusted to you. And it is the last call. I want you in my army. Now. I have my plan. Do not hinder me. Do not hinder me. Remember that you are servants, that you are sons, and as such you owe me obedience and fidelity. Once you have stood up, raise your brother priests. Remember that I am your head. I am who unites you. I am your leader and captain. Your hour has passed. And mine begins now. My hour, the hour in which my plan is revealed for what it is, infinite, powerful, unshakable, radiant. For years you have been deaf to my voice that speaks in these small voices, scattered throughout the world in each age of the church for the good of all my children. You have cast them aside, considering them superfluous, just imaginings of unstable minds. But now I unite these voices in my voice of thunder. My voice will thunder to the ends of all that is created. My voice will reach the deepest depths. All that exists will feel the thundering of my voice. Only I can say enough the great enough that defeats the works of Satan. I, your God, will say it. And I call you to once again take your places in my army and that with me you will raise your voice in this great cry. I wait for you, sons, one more hour, no more. I waited for you for a long time and there's no time left. Get your houses in order, sons. I am coming and I will visit each of you. Are you ready for this visit of mine? No. This is why I come to awaken you, so that you make yourselves ready, so that you remember your Abba and remember your true vocation. Sons, stand up. Now, my plan advances inexorably, a plan of mercy and justice, a plan of goodness and power, my plan to reconquer my children, my church, and all of my creation. Listen to me, sons. Stand up. Your Abba, your Father who loves you, your Lord and God, he who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. I am coming. Then John Henry Weston gives a lot of scriptural references here. Part three is apparently coming out tomorrow. What do you think about that? Do you find this interesting? Especially, as I noted at the beginning of this, for those joining late, that this is happening in the Archdiocese of San Antonio, the same place that that traditional family operation retreat center is being crushed without notice and without justice. Do you find that interesting? As interesting as I do. Curious what you have to say about this. So, <laughs> Draconian, how long, how long ago was that hour? I mean, these messages were given in February, published just a few days ago, a question, remember, God exists outside of time and space. He operates on his own timetable. Clearly, there's some sense of time to God. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not the same as you and I. Um, we shall see. Does it have to do with that eclipse? I don't know. We shall see, though. He does make it sound as if everything is crumbling, all the works of Satan. When you think about that, when he says he has infiltrated everything, that means that things moving forward are going to be very turbulent, perhaps more than anybody's ready for. I don't have the details so far, Tony Joe, of what the apparition, when this all began. But they said that this began, they've been getting these kind of messages for 30 years, and then now they're making the most recent ones public. How many visionaries? We don't have all those details. Someone says it's giving Medjugorje vibes. I hope not. We will find out, though. The nice thing about this, Colleen, is that this one is makes it sound like things are imminent, right? So if things, this stuff doesn't come to pass anytime soon, then we'll know. It's sort of like there's a priest who I won't name who five years ago now 
gave these apocalyptic doom and gloom things. And he basically, a couple of them were like, you could just flip a coin kind of app, uh, predictions that would come true. But his third one, he gave a qualifying one um, that uh, in my country, a uh, domestic uh, problem would erupt, we'll say. I think 1860s. And it hasn't come to pass, which means he was a false prophet. A lot of people don't like hearing that, though. And you're going to have uh, some of this more. Are there miracles to back this up? That would be a good question directed to John Henry Weston, who seems to be the go-to person on this guy who runs LifeSite News. Um, I will tell you of all this, though. Talk to the cowboy priest. He's total stud. Proof. Um, I don't have a way of reaching out to him. If he wants to reach out to me, that'd be great. But um, I don't do a lot of interviews either, so. All right, folks. I'm just curious. I'm just curious what you have to say about this. Remember, the the message comes with this warning that God, God's voice is about to thunder, and that is a very sort of um, strong thing to say. So, if these things don't come to pass, and remember, we're you know that that eclipse coming up that people think might be part of all this. If this stuff comes, if nothing comes to pass, then we'll, well, you'll get your answer, and it makes it sound like it'll be soon, much sooner than. Marian apparitions about holding back our lady holding back her, her son's arm and those sorts of things. Miguel, I don't know what you're talking about with that priest. Uh, I, I stopped paying attention to him a long time ago when he showed that he didn't know what he was talking about when, with some other things. What's my thought on the throne of Peter line? Um, I'm not a set of a contest. I, don't think the sea's been empty since 1958. I have legitimate doubts about the current occupant. If anybody paying attention should have, have doubts. Whether or not you, you prescribed any particular thesis, which I don't, so I, I find them all dissatisfactory. But not having doubts at this point is would, is strange. Would be strange. David Wilson, if it doesn't come to pass, is this the test of a prophet? I mean, that's right. I mean, if a prophet makes a prediction, and this is a prediction, Things are coming soon. If it doesn't come to pass, then guess what? Then it, it means it wasn't true. Yes, uh, yes, Maria, God's time is different. It, this sounds, well, they're using much more imminent language than anything I've encountered in more recent apparitions. Arda says, John Henry Weston is giving a message live in the morning at 10 a.m. on LifeSite News' YouTube channel. But yeah, so the question about this, the one thing I'll leave you with before we end this, whether you believe this to be real or not, it should inspire at least one thing for you. We are in the middle of Lent. It's time of penance. Perhaps this would be a good time to go to confession. And if confession is not available to you for the next several days, take a moment to say an act of pen, uh, perfect contrition and then make a note to go to confession at the, your next earliest opportunity. Maybe today's the time to start praying an extra rosary every day or to do more spiritual reading or to pr just pray more. Visit the Blessed Sacrament, even if it's in just in, in the tabernacle for at least a few minutes. Do things to begin getting yourself right with God. And if you've got sins that keep sending you to the confessional, time to redouble down on breaking those bad habits, whatever it is. Even if this turns out to be nothing, there will at least be that good fruit from it. Thanks very much for tuning in today, folks. Let me know in if you're watching this later in the comments if you think this is kind of a weird coincidence or not a coincidence at all that this is happening in the same diocese that that traditional priest and traditional family operation is happening in. It's odd, really odd. Thanks very much, folks. So always pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria. <laughs>